The difference between return and print can feel confusing when you're just getting started with programming. Turns out there's a big difference between these two concepts and they're unrelated to one another in many ways. So let's take a look at how each of them works and how we differentiate them from one another to know when we would use one versus the other. So when a function call occurs, we know that we give our arguments to the parameters and we think of those as the inputs to the function call. And then when a function call has a return statement that gets evaluated, we think of that as the result of the function call. So we can imagine, just like we looked at in our fundamental pattern using a block diagram, we can think of this max2 function, which we're defining above, and we'll come back and look at closely in just a moment, as an opaque box, right? It has two int parameters, so we need to give it two arguments. So we could say give it you know, five and uh, 10 if we wanted, and it has one int result. Right? That's the return, the value that gets returned by it once this function call evaluates. But we don't really know what goes on inside of it. So let's look into the box here, which is the code shown above. And we see that we're modifying a previous definition of max2 that we used. So this is a function that has two int parameters and returns an int value. The modification is we have this print function call above our if statement. And that's interesting. We also see after that two return statements. So we're using one function call or one function definition that has print and return in it. So these must be different things that have different ramifications. So let's imagine this function call playing out a little bit. So we're saying, okay, A is five and B is 10, okay? We'll notice that the first thing that would happen after we pass those arguments into the parameters is we would hit this first line of the function definition that says print. We're gonna print the string A, which is five, concatenated with a comma and then 10. So five comma space 10, is going to be printed to our terminal. And you're gonna see some output in our terminal. But notice that this function call has not completed. This function definition is still being evaluated. So we haven't yet reached this part of the function, right? This part of the function is, what does this function result in, right? What is the return value of this function? So we haven't yet reached that. So what's going on? How do we imagine this visually in our diagram? When we first looked at this pattern, we mentioned that all of our functions or algorithms are running in some environment, and some of them have impacts on the environment, right? Well, in this case, with the print function, it is having an impact on the environment. We're, we're sending data somewhere else outside of our program to our terminal that we're interfacing with, that we as the people uh, interacting with our programs can see. And we call this a side effect because we're sending some data to some side channel, in this case, the terminal, uh, that is outside of the normal sort of flow of here's my input parameters and here's my return type return value, right? So when you print something, you're having a side effect. And notice that we're sending that outside of our algorithm, outside of our program to somewhere else in the environment. We'll see there are other functions that have side effects too. Like when we wanna save some data to a file on our computer, that file on your computer is separate from your running program. And so it's gonna be a side effect on the environment as well. When we have side effects, uh, those aren't necessarily results. In fact, they're not, I shouldn't even say necessarily, those are not results we can use somewhere else in our program. If we print this string here, we can't use that concatenated string anywhere else in our program without reproducing that expression again, right? This is data that gets sent to the terminal and then it, it's kind of done. We, we don't have anything else we can do with it, right? But if we continue on here, and we ask, okay, is A greater than B? Is five greater than 10? That's false. So we go to the else statement and we return B. So B is 10 and this function call would return the value 10 back to somewhere else in our program where we can use that value, right? We're sending some meaningful piece of information. The result of this max two function call or the answer of what is the max two of five and 10? Well, uh, the max of these two values is 10. So when we call this function, we wanna be able to use that function call expression and know that it's going to result in, in, in some meaningful value. In this case, it's 10. If that function wants to print some things out and have these side effects that show up as the program's running and have some output in the terminal, that's that function's prerogative, right? And you could often will find yourself doing this when you're writing a function and trying to debug some issue. You wanna see what some value of some variable is at some point, and we'll find some other techniques for doing that as well. But printing is creating a side effect. It's having some output show up in your terminal, whereas returning is sending a value back to somewhere else in your program so that you can make use of it later in your program. All right. In other words, the return statement is really for the computer as it's evaluating your program. 
If it reaches a return statement, it sends a value somewhere else inside of that program's evaluation right, so that you can use that value. Printing is for getting information to your end user. Right? Now, when you're working in the REPL, this is confusing because if you call a function, if you were to call this function in the REPL and just give an expression that's just a plain old function call expression like max 2, 5, 10, you would see 10 printed out automatically. Well, remember, REPL has the P, the P is print, and it evaluates, that's the E, it evaluates your method call or your function call, and then it prints the result automatically for you. In most programs, especially in, in shared, uh, in stored programs that we write in our files, there's no printing that happens automatically. So when we write programs in stored files, and we want to get some special output back to the user when we're not using the REPL, when we're just saying, hey, run this program, we've got to print those values in order to say, hey, send this information as a side effect outside of my program to the terminal so that the person using this program can see it. When a function returns and has no other side effects, like it's not printing anything in it, so this wouldn't apply to the previous function, but if you wanted to print out the value of a return that gets returned by a function call, you either have to surround that function call in parentheses. So for example, if we had said, you know, print and then max to, I'm running out of space here, I apologize. So I'm wrapping, I'm, this is my opening parenthesis and I'm wrapping around 10 comma five. These are my arguments and then closing parenthesis, closing parenthesis. If I had written this on one line, I, uh, and, and we evaluated this, max two would have returned a value of 10 and then we would have seen 10 printed to our screen, right? But if we had written this in a stored program and we had not written this call to print, we had just called max two and done nothing else with it, we wouldn't have seen any, any results show up on our screen or in our terminal. The other way we can make use of a return value is we can store that value in some variable and then later print out that variable because it will have saved the return value from that function call. There are some special types of functions which return nothing. Their only purpose is to produce side effects, right? And we've seen one of these in the magic eight ball example where we had a game whose main function didn't actually return anything. The main function was just meant to start up the game uh, and print some information out to the person using it. We can imagine another type of, uh, of procedure, which is just a function that returns none. And notice that this procedure is just a loop that will take a, two different parameters. One is a string and the other is an integer. And I would encourage you to try this, writing this function out. Uh, and it will loop however many times this repeat parameter is given in whatever its argument value is. So if we call hello five, for example, so let's imagine this print repeatedly. So the string uh, value line will be initialized to hello and repeats will be initialized to five, right? So hello is in quotes and the num number five for repeats. We set up i to be zero and notice we're following this pattern of a while loop that's gonna run some number of times. It's gonna run whatever repeats variable is number of times. So it will run five times over. And the only thing this loop is doing is it's printing out that line. So if we ran this first evaluation, we would see the word hello printed five times into our terminal and then the word world printed five times into our terminal. Uh, and then when this function is done, right, when that loop is done, notice there's no return statement. If we wanted to, we could have returned none. We could have written a, a return statement that said return and then capital none. And that would have been okay, uh, but you don't have to. And it's not common that in these types of functions, anyone would actually write that. It happens implicitly. Uh, but when we don't return anything, the return value is none. So that means we couldn't actually say like, you know, uh, S is a stir that is assigned print repeatedly because print repeatedly, when this function call evaluates, it, it evaluates to none, which isn't a string type, right? So there's a big difference between printing and here, this is a function that printed uh, five times over for each of these two function calls. And uh, this one function could print multiple times and that's okay we're sending data back to the user, but a function call can only return once. And when that function call returns, it sends that information somewhere else in the program. And then wherever it sends that information back to, to the function call, uh, you have to go out of your way specifically, if you're not working in the REPL, to try and print that information out if you wanted it to show up to your user, right? So you will see functions that return none and, and recognize that the whole point of these functions is that they're having some side effect 
typically getting information to the user or saving information to the disk or sending information out to the internet, something outside of your program uh, is, is we're trying to communicate some values to it. So this is the difference between return and print, and hopefully that starts to clarify it. And as you get more experience working with more complex functions, I promise you'll feel more comfortable very quickly.